This video contains spoilers for John Wick Chapter 4. At the end of his latest movie, we see the death of John Wick. But is everyone's favorite puppy-loving assassin really dead? What say you, John? You're dead, right? Am I? No. He's alive, and I'm about to prove it. Long live John Wick. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that knows that no business can be done on continental grounds. So why not subscribe and watch some of our videos instead? Oh boy, loyal theorists, today we're talking about one of my favorite franchises to pop up over the past decade, John Wick. You ready, John? In case you missed this one, John Wick is about a legendary assassin seeking revenge against the entire criminal underworld, known collectively as the High Table, after they kill his dog. Later movies are less about the dog and more about just leaving the organization, but regardless, these films have a pretty simple premise. What follows then are four films of incredible action in a super stylish neon lit world, all directed by stunt professionals who make sure you see exactly what's going on. And I think the results speak for themselves. John Wick is one of those rare franchises where each sequel is arguably better than the entry that came before, with box office numbers to match. Not that much of a shock when it's clear how much love is put into these things. But you know what was a shock? John Wick's death at the end of chapter 4. After months of running and fighting his way through endless armies of faceless goons, John is forced into one final duel against his old friend Kane. In it, he's shot three times. And although he manages to survive long enough to kill the big boss and win his freedom, minutes later, he takes a seat and peacefully succumbs to his wounds. To say that literally no one saw this coming is putting things mildly. As I was walking out of my showing of the movie, I heard multiple people asking each other, he can't be dead, right? I mean, it takes a lot to surprise me in movies at this point, and even I gotta admit, this one got me. John Wick is a huge franchise. There is a hunger from fans for more of these movies, and now at the height of their success, they kill off the main character? No, I don't think so. It doesn't matter if we saw a grave because John Wick isn't dead. When you actually look at this franchise and examine the type of injuries that Wick sustains throughout his quest to escape the high table, things do not line up here. There is no way that the wounds that he takes on this final duel kill him. In fact, not only is John Wick not dead, but after watching these movies again, I am almost 100% convinced that John Wick literally cannot die. And there's a secret reason for it. So put on your magic bulletproof suit, loyal theorists, we've got a death to disprove. So to do this analysis, we're going to be lumping the movies into two groups, John Wick chapters 1 through 3 and John Wick chapter 4. Why? Well, it has to do with the time frame where the movies take place. According to franchise director Chad Stileski, the first three John Wick movies take place in like a week, week and a half, somewhere in there. So all this fighting, all the goons he kills, all the damage that he takes across those three movies, yep, all of that's apparently happening in just under two weeks. Meanwhile, here I am weeping on the floor every time I step on a Lego. On the other hand, chapter 4 apparently takes place like six months later. Enough time that John will have had himself a chance to rest, heal, and refill his tank. Additionally, we're only going to be looking at the major injuries here. Sure, he sustains plenty of punches and falls through glass, but we're going to be focusing on the moments that stand the best chances of killing him. And it seems to me that the best starting point is actually the end, by taking a closer look at the wounds that do wind up quote-unquote killing him. During this final shootout, Kane grazes Wick's right arm, hits his left shoulder, and then shoots his lower abdomen. The resulting blood loss then seemingly causes Wick to die shortly thereafter. But hold on for a second there. Why does that wound pattern sound so familiar? Well, because this isn't the first time that we've seen someone shot in these places in the franchise. In Chapter 3, John is forced to shoot a friendly doctor in order to save his life. It's complicated, but trust me, it works. Anyway, Wick asks where the doctor would like to be shot, and the doctor points to two specific locations that'll hurt, but won't be fatal. Where? Here. Just below my floating rib. Oh, wait! One may not be enough. Be sure not to graze my good luck, Mr. Wick. The first is in his lower abdomen side, and the second is through his shoulder. The exact same parts of the body where Kane hits Wick during their shootout at the end of Chapter 4. And remember, the doctor chose those spots specifically because they wouldn't be outright fatal. That right there, that is highly suspicious. Not only that, but John also shot Kane in the same part of the abdomen, and we see him able to make a full recovery by Chapter 4's post credit scene. So already we we have ourselves two solid points of evidence indicating that John shouldn't be dead at the end of this duel. And all of that is without saying that these guys are trained professionals. They can get a headshot in their sleep. The fact that they're only grazing each other and hitting non-essential areas, that right there is a dead giveaway that something else is afoot. But let's just talk for a second about blood loss. According to the National Library of Medicine, healthy adults have an average of four and a half to five and a half liters of blood circulating through their bodies at any given time. Obviously, everyone's gonna react to trauma differently, but as a general guideline, most adults can lose up to 15% of that blood volume without any sort of physical symptom. This is known as a class 1 hemorrhage. Anything above that, though, symptoms get progressive.
progressively worse. Between 15 and 40% blood loss can result in nausea, fatigue, and hallucination. It isn't until you get to 40% or more blood loss where things start to become seriously deadly. These are the class 4 hemorrhages. They're the sorts of wounds that have high risks of organ failure, coma, and death. So, how much blood does John lose? Well, to calculate that, we need to know how badly he was injured. According to the internet movie Firearms Database, the guns used in the duel appear to be a pair of engraved Thompson Center Arms Encore pistols, with nickel-plated or silver-cast 44 Magnum cartridges. How powerful is a 44 Magnum cartridge? In the words of Dirty Harry, This is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and will blow your head clean off. These should be doing some significant damage. Emphasis on should. But now, just take a look at the wounds on John's stomach and arms. To lose 40% of his blood, John Wick would need to bleed out about 2 liters. And thanks to the white shirts, we can see how much blood he's actually losing. And it's not enough. This is merely a pint or two of blood. It's not enough to cause him to die like this. This also checks out with the statistics. According to an Annals of Surgery study, 88.3% of people who get shot in the abdomen area survive. Lastly, we've seen him survive this exact set of injuries before. In Chapter 2, John is shot twice in the right side of his abdomen while fending off one of the assassins. Though it clearly hurts John and causes him to hold his wound and stumble about, he does survive it just fine. So in John Wick's final death scene, he actually survives. But what about throughout the rest of the movie? Could his injuries have just added up? What about getting hit by a car? John is hit by several cars throughout these films, which obviously can result in a lethal injury. 9.1% of pedestrians hit by vehicles are killed. Another 21.8% are severely injured. The big X factor there is ultimately how the hit occurs and how fast the cars go. In John Wick Chapter 4, for instance, we see him hit by a car during his battle in the middle of traffic. Notice, though, that this fight's happening on a very specific road, the Champs-Élysées that circles around Paris's Arc de Triomphe, a massive 12-lane roundabout where the speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour, or just over 30 miles an hour. On other streets in Paris where we also see him get hit, the speed limit's lower, restricted to 30 kilometers or 18 miles per hour. But here's the thing, the odds are in John's favor with all of these cases. Only 33% of pedestrians hit by vehicles traveling 25 miles per hour hour are severely injured, and only 10% hit at 35 miles per hour die. These hits at those speeds, while they certainly look painful, they're likely some of the least dangerous things that we see Wick survive throughout the films. So if cars aren't a threat and bullets aren't a threat, what about falls? Chapter 4 features an incredible top-down firefight looking like it was ripped straight out of Hotline Miami. A firefight that ends with him jumping out of a fourth-story window. But don't worry, there's a conveniently placed van that's gonna break his fall. <sighs> Four stories converts to roughly 43.3 feet or 13.2 meters. And according to various health and medicine textbooks, just 50% of people who fall four stories are actually able to survive. So John here is just flipping a coin with his life. But it's worth noting that that one is actually one of his lower falls. During a fight with a member of the high table, John falls from a balcony, hits a beam on the way down, and then falls flat onto the concrete floor below. This scene was shot at a space called Kraftwerk Berlin, and estimating from the information that's available on their website, the total height of this fall was roughly 50 feet or 15 meters. What are the odds of John surviving this higher fall? Well, believe it or not, but the beam actually helped his odds. Keanu Reeves is 6 foot 1 inch, and we see that he's falling about twice his body height, or 12 feet, before he hits that beam. Yes, he's landing hard on his back, but it's enough to slow him down and restart his fall at a lower level, where now he's only falling an additional 38 feet, or 11 and a half meters. According to this scientific study, the odds of dying from a fall at that height is only 18%, so it's likely that he's gonna survive. But shouldn't his back be broken? No, actually. Studies have shown that to fracture a cervical spine, you need a force of about 3,000 newtons. That's equal to the impact created by a 500-pound car crashing into a wall at 30 miles an hour. So how close to this number does John Wick get? Very. You see, you can actually calculate freefall energy as mass times gravity times height of fall. Keanu Reeves weighs in at 175 pounds, and we know that he's falling about 12 feet. That gets us to 2,847 joules of energy when he hits the beam. Almost the 3,000 newtons to break in but just not quite enough, which brings up an interesting point. For as painful as all those back-breaking falls look, they seem to be there intentionally. The filmmakers are ensuring that they never cross the four-story rule, which would then put John's odds of survival as extremely unlikely. And in moments when he is falling from greater than four stories, like in here, they try to make sure to break his fall and his back with a couple of painful stops on the way down. That puts John's scientific odds of survival just on the right side of believable while still looking viscerally painful in the process. But just 
how far can they push these physics? Case in point, the mother of all falls from John Wick 3 when he shot off the top of the Continental. True to form, on his way down, he hits a slanted roof, bounces off a fire escape railing, crashes into another awning, and then smashes into the pavement. The real world location used as the stand-in for the Continental Hotel here is one Wall Street court in New York City, which stands at a staggering 205 feet tall. More than three times taller than the tumble that John takes off that nightclub in Chapter 4. And while that would certainly be a fall that's impossible to survive, that's not actually what we're seeing happen. Well, yes, one Wall Street court was visually what we see. When John actually falls, he's falling from a much smaller height. If you count the floors as John falls down, he's actually tumbling eight full stories. And considering a typical story in New York is 10 feet tall, that translates to a whopping 80 foot or 24 meter fall. Still, his highest by a wide margin. That said, what damage would we expect to be done here? Well, not as much as you might expect. The slanted surface two stories down would actually help dissipate most of his initial falling energy, resetting him largely back to zero. The last part of the fall would also be survivable, as the awning catches him about 30 feet down. The biggest issue, as you might expect, is the fire escape. Here, John is falling a little over two stories to land right on his back on a thin metal rail. That would almost absolutely break his back. Again, plugging into our handy equation energy equals mass times gravity times height, he's landing on that railing with nearly 4,750 joules of energy. To put it another way, he's falling at a speed roughly equivalent to 36 miles per hour and then coming to a dead stop on that railing on his back. The fact that John is able to walk away from the Continental Fall at all, let alone continue his rampage six months later in Chapter 4, yeah, nothing short of impossible. But perhaps John's most serious injury is the first that he sustains in the entire franchise. Towards the start of the very first movie, one of the goons takes an aluminum bat to the back of John's head. He's then kicked in the gut, in the face, struck across his left arm by the bat, and then punched in the face again, rendering him unconscious. Now, the hits to the gut and the arm could have easily left him with internal abdominal injuries or broken bones, but those are far from the most concerning thing to happen here. The fact that John's hit in the head multiple times hard enough that he's knocked out, that would give him a grade 3 concussion. That is serious. According to the CDC, that should have given John slurred speech, decreased coordination, confusion, intense headaches, nausea, for weeks, if not months, after this injury. Now, this is an important fact because we see John get hit in the head multiple times throughout the series, even knocked out again after getting hit with a car, but he shows no signs of any lingering or life-threatening symptoms from all these concussions. He's still able to carry on conversations immediately after waking up. Ah, oh, then you got married, huh? Settle down. How you manage that anyways? Look. In short, over the course of two weeks from chapters 1 through 3, John Wick is shot, stabbed, hit by cars, dangerously cauterizes a wound, been close enough to an explosion that he's thrown by it, and fallen a distance that breaks his back. All of these wounds are far worse than what finally quote-unquote kills him at the end of chapter 4. It can only lead me to conclude that John Wick just isn't dead at the end of the latest movie. The name is dead, the legend of John Wick is dead, but the man, no. He's still alive and out there. But that still doesn't answer the question of how. Not how he survived chapter 4, I think we've covered that fairly well, but how he survived chapters 1 through 3. That is a brutal two weeks that should have killed him multiple times over. But you know what? I think I have an answer, loyal theorists. See, in a short that we released a few weeks ago, we proved that the blind assassin Kane has to have himself superpowers. It is the only way that he'd be able to feel what cards he's dealt during the chapter 4 poker game. And I don't think that he's the only superpowered assassin that we're seeing in these movies. John has powers too, specifically a healing factor akin to Wolverine or Deadpool. Now, that might seem like a bit of a leap, but we see evidence of John's healing factor in action during the films. In chapter 1, John gets this cut on his nose, and yet, it's completely gone when chapter 2 begins. This is supposed to be happening immediately afterwards, and even a superficial cut like this could take a few days to heal completely. Want a more serious wound that gets magically healed? Remember John getting shot in his abdomen twice during chapter 2? And yet, when a stab wound on his shoulder is being treated in chapter 3, we see that those gunshots on his abdomen have completely healed over. No scars, no wound dressing, no stitches, no nothing. Chapter 3 takes place immediately immediately after chapter 2, and the filmmakers cared enough about continuity that John is wearing the same shirt with the same blood stains from those gunshot wounds, and yet no actual evidence of those wounds on his body exist, all because John Wick has a super healing factor. That's why he's able to keep going and going and going throughout these films, getting up every time he's knocked down, killing every assassin that gets sent his way. John Wick isn't dead because he is literally immortal. Thematically, it works real well. John and Kane agree before their final duel, Those who cling to death. Live. Those who cling to life die.
and no one clings to death more than John Wick. It's also worth noting that the John Wick franchise was born during an era where superhero films dominated the box office. I suspect that this one might just be a sleeper superhero film. Grittier, more realistic, but still starring someone with larger-than-life special abilities. And now what do we see as I record this? They're already announcing a John Wick Chapter 5. So, when it's revealed that John Wick has faked his death because he's a man who literally can't die, remember where he heard it first. But hey, all this work taking down the assassin sent by the high table couldn't be easy on an empty stomach. Thankfully for Mr. John Wick, it's easier than ever to make sure you get good food with our sponsor for today's episode, Factor. Factor is a meal service that's focused on getting fresh, never-frozen meals delivered directly to your front door. That means if you're too busy to meal plan, but you want to still make sure you're eating well, Factor is going to be your secret weapon. I think you guys know at this point that I'm just incredibly busy, between trying to balance all these channels and having a family. So, having these sorts of meals just show up so I don't have to go to the grocery store, it has been awesome. I also don't have to worry about chopping or cutting anything. Factor's meals are just popped into the microwave and they're ready in two minutes without any hassle of prep or cleanup. I love that efficiency. And the meals are delicious. Factor is now also owned by HelloFresh, so you have yourself an even wider variety of meals that you can choose from. They have food for keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus lifestyles, all prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians. Basically, if you have yourself a specific diet, there is likely a Factor meal that's gonna fit your needs. Everyone in the office also loves these meals. Like, when they come shipped to us, we all compete for who gets them on any given lunch period. Our production manager, Justin, actually really loves the herb-crusted chicken, though it kind of makes me wonder what John Wick's preferred meal would be. It strikes me as a pork chop guy. Anyway, if you want to skip the hassle of cooking, but you still want to eat some delicious food that's ready in a matter of minutes, head to factor75.com, F-A-C-T-O-R-75.com, or just click the link below and use the code FILMTHEORY50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Again, that is 50% off your first Factor box by heading over to F-A-C-T-O-R-75.com, and then using the promo code F-I-L-M-T-H-E-O-R-Y-50, or, you know, you can just click the link in the description if you don't want to worry about typing all that out. Thank you again to Factor for sponsoring today's episode, and for supplying me the last couple of months of my healthy meals, and as always, remember, my friends, it's all just a theory. A film theory! And cut!